April is tax season and taxes are a headache for any investor. But what if your investments are in a regulatory gray area? If you've got crypto in your portfolio, you may have a problem. And that's why we're talking to David Spencer, the blockchain accountant and owner of DKS Tax and Consulting. David, welcome. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here, Ernest. Pleasure to have you. And we couldn't have better timing here. So you're a CPA specialized in digital assets. Uh, what do you tell clients who think they can get away with not declaring their crypto? <laughs> well, the first thing is that they won't be clients very long. Um, but the, the most important thing is to pay your taxes and go back to work. If you fail to report more than 25% in income, now you're not going to have tax problems anymore. You're going to have fraud problems. So if you made 100 grand and failed to report 25 grand that was swimming around in crypto that you thought no one could see, you're going to have some serious issues. And my job is to help people sleep good at night, knowing that the tax man's not coming for them. All right. So they definitely have to pay their taxes is what I'm hearing. Yes, indeed. You do have to pay taxes on crypto. That's the news. All right. Now, what are some of the main differences between digital assets and other investments uh, from a tax perspective? From a tax perspective, we have, they're generally the same. There's a couple key differences. Primarily, what did you pay for the asset and what did you sell it for? That's some subtraction that most accountants can take care of. However, asking the right questions of a client and making sure that we understood their trading pattern and we've understood that where the losses and where the gains are coming from, that's an important point. Secondarily, we are still working on the wash sale rule to apply to crypto. So in a traditional asset like a stock, if you sell the asset at a loss and then purchase it back sooner than 60 days, that, that sale is going to be considered a wash sale and the tax advantages that came with it by selling it at a loss are gonna be washed away, hence wash sale. However, in the digital asset space, those rules are not have not been applied yet. We're still waiting on the legislation to make those make those real. So for the time being, I always encourage clients to do tax loss harvesting at the end of the year to recoup or offset any gains that they may have. Right. And crypto investors, crypto traders are very often short term investors. Crypto is very volatile. People are getting in and out of positions. So I guess uh, that's a great opportunity for people who are primarily crypto traders. Yeah, if you're primarily a crypto trader, tax loss harvesting near year end is going to be really, really important for you um, because gains can happen fast in the digital asset world and you want to take your gains when they happen. I've seen a lot of people who said, you know, I was a millionaire two or three weeks ago. Um, so take your gains when they come. And then at the end of the year, when it's time to do tax planning and thinking about how to minimize your tax obligation, more than happy to help. Right. So we see crypto up uh pretty well this year, uh, having a good year so far, but it was way down last year. How should we be approaching a year like 2022? In 2022, the, the cat's kind of already out of the bag, but when we have a down year, we want to get to the end of the year and look at our investment, look at our portfolio and say, where are my winners? Where are my losers? If I've got gains to take, especially around year end, crypto gets even ultra volatile, right? And then where are my losers? Let me take those losers and see if I can offset my gains so that I wind up ideally somewhere close to zero and then I can pay as little tax as possible. Right. And uh, if 2023 proves to be a boom year, uh, is this essentially the same idea? You're really at that point, you're really looking for offsets as opposed to trying to hide or trying to offset gains. You're really looking for losses to offset those gains in 2023. Correct. If if you've got gains in 2023, you've got a great problem, right? So that's a good problem to have. And most often the best advice is pay your taxes and go back to work, right? Um, crypto is not going anywhere, right? We're really talking about a whole industry that is evolving. And if you find a way around taxes, let me know, because I don't know if there's one. Now, are there any advantages to holding uh, crypto as an individual versus a business? Because uh, many crypto traders are individuals. They're not obviously not institutional traders. Many of them don't necessarily have a background or any interest in conventional financial markets. So they may not have considered some of the implications of putting that crypto or putting their trading activities under a business. That can be a really powerful strategy. Oftentimes, depending on the level of activity, the kind of trading, what kind of assets you're doing, um, if you've got a large staking portfolio, uh, 
those can be those can be really, really powerful. Oftentimes the transaction fees, if you're an NFT trader and you're engaged in gas wars, those transaction fees can become a sizable piece of, of your trading activity. And if you wrap that activity inside of a, some type of entity, you can take advantage of business expenses that were used in producing that income. So we evaluate that on a case by case basis, but that is definitely something that I've seen investors take advantage of. All right. Now, this is also a very fast moving area, obviously. Uh, we've seen some major developments in recent weeks, recent months. We saw uh, a lot of IRS agents hired by the Biden administration a little while ago. And just this week, we heard that they've allocated $2.4 billion uh, to the SEC. And the SEC says they're going to spend a fair amount of that money going after crypto. So uh, what, what do you see changing in the next year or two on the, on the tax front and for, for crypto within this structure? Well, hopefully we get some kind of common sense regulation, right? We're going to have to lean on financial professionals to lobby their, their lawmakers to, to ensure that they have the knowledge necessary to make good decisions. But hopefully we get some good legislation with crypto, some, some realistic uh, regulation. And one of the things that we might see change is the wash sale rule. So th that is one of the easy, low-hanging fruit. So use that while we've got the opportunity. Um, we're going to be discussing some of this at the Bitcoin Policy Summit in D.C. on April 26th. It's going to be a really exciting opportunity to share information with lawmakers, to give them some insight. And one of the big one of the scary things that we've seen is a desire to have exchanges and miners and actors in the digital asset industry require Social Security number reporting and more detailed reporting from their customers. And that can be troublesome because oftentimes you really don't know these people except on the other side of a screen. You know, crypto is pseudo anonymous. And so that could become really, really troublesome. Uh, there is some technology, zero knowledge proofs and other kind of anonymity um, technology that will both allow us to fulfill the government's obligation and requirement for us to have some kind of disclosure, while at the same time making sure that our data is safe and secure in our own hands. And so that's one of the big promises of blockchain technology anyway. Right. Well, let's let's think about that a little bit. Uh, we know that when you conduct transactions on the blockchain, you're creating permanent records, permanent digital records. So where is the breakdown? Because many people believe that crypto trading and uh, crypto ownership, crypto custody is completely anonymous. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. No, it's not. It does require some very sophisticated technology to identify a person via the blockchain, right? Um, that technology exists. There are companies like Elliptic as well as Chainalysis, and their whole job is to do cryptocurrency investigations. Um, we've all known that crimes happen in the digital asset world. Crimes have been happening since the days of horse and buggy, so that's not new to crypto. But the technology behind it is much more sophisticated. And companies like Elliptic, companies like Chainalysis, they work with government agencies and they're using your IP address to identify you. Your computer is leaving a crumb trail wherever you go. And so connecting a wallet address to an IP address, that's kind of low hanging fruit. The question that the IRS is trying to get answered is, do they have authorization to use that information yet, right? So piece of the, a piece of the legislation that may be coming down the road is just giving the IRS and other regulatory bodies, the tools that they need in order to affect the legislation and the regulation that they are already tasked with. Right. So in other words, if they have the if they have the ability to associate the IP with the identity of the person, then that's the last that's the last level. That's the last uh, bridge they need to cross to directly associate specific crypto trades, specific crypto wallets with individual taxpayers in the United States? In theory, yes, There's, there will be fights about it. <laughs> right, well, not necessarily that they'll get there, but I guess that's what, they're, that's what they're going for, and that would obviously make their job a lot easier. Yes, indeed, that is the plan. All right, well, thank you very much, David. This is uh, very timely advice. It's my pleasure, and it's tax season, so I've gotta get back to work. That's right. I'm Ernest Hoffman for Kitco News. Don't forget to subscribe.